Hello. <laughs> oh God, we're starting off well. <laughs> she said that she wanted to start and then didn't want to say anything. <laughs> right then. Deep breath. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Norfolk Girls Knitting Podcast. Yep. I'm Amanda. And I'm Shannon. And together we're Norfolk Girls Knitting on YouTube and on Instagram. Yep. And we have got a an email address. Yeah, we've got an email address. Norfolk Girls Knitting at gmail.com. Yes. Individually. Yep. Uh, oh, okay. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shannon. I'm Blue Fern Yarns. Uh, so you can find sort of all my hand dyed yarns and knitting notions and a few patterns and things like that at bluefernyarns.co.uk. You can also find me on pretty much all social media as Blue Fern Yarns. And I do have an email address, which is hello at bluefernyarns.co.uk. So we're very well rehearsed this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Just reel it all off. <laughs> so um, I'm Miss Mandy Lou on Instagram and Ravelry. I do have an individual email address, which is definitely amanda at gmail.com. You're so proud of yourself. I'm so proud. <laughs> Do you know what? I was looking at it and I thought, I wonder if there is one. And I put it in and it's like... It's available. <laughs> it's available. So I'm having that. So yeah, definitely Amanda at gmail.com. And we'll put yep. everything down in the description thingy. Yep. Cool. <laughs> All right. So what have you been up to? Um... Oh, do you know what? We were just discussing this and I can't remember what I've been up to. Tom? <laughs> So yes, it was Tom's 40th birthday on Sunday, Sunday just gone, <laughs> <laughs> but we celebrated the weekend before. So I took him out to the Tudor Pass restaurant, which is a Michelin star and fancy, I think it's four rosettes for the no AA idea. one. Um, I don't know. It's a really, really fancy place. Um, I felt so out of sorts being there because I'm like, I'm way too common to be there but um anyway <laughs> it was really really good it was nice um, to get dressed up though wasn't it it was very nice we got dressed up we went into the cocktail bar had a few cocktails um then we went over into the restaurant and it was a seven course taster menu now oh my god so <laughs> some of the food i hate it <laughs> i'm not gonna lie um and then the rest of it was amazing even the food that I didn't like, I could appreciate why other people would like it. Yeah. I don't like cold food very often. I prefer, if I'm getting food, I want a hot meal. I want a proper food. Um, and like some of the starters and like, I think they called it, um, it wasn't a starter. What did they call it? Sample, samples or something mm. like that, right at the beginning. And they were all cold and, um, yeah, there was one that Tom told me to do all of because he had his one, <clears throat> and then I had my bit, and um, he said like, because it was so it was an awkward shape basically, and I didn't know how to eat it. And he's like, just do it all in one, do it all in one. So I did it all in one, and I really wish I hadn't <laughs> because there's no paper napkins, <laughs> so I couldn't spit it out. <laughs> I didn't like that one. You're so classy. <laughs> this is why you can't so take classy restaurants. <laughs> As soon as they got onto the hot food, loved all of that. Yeah. And the desserts, obviously, because obs, obs. Um, so yeah, so we did that. Then I went to Unravel the following day. Yes, conveniently, really this hotel was really close to Unravel. Yes. The same weekend as well. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so like you to... planned it. Yeah, I know. It's great, isn't it? Uh, so yeah, I went to Unravel. Um, I'm not going to show off my purchases until I start using the yarn. So I have got plans for some of the yarn now, because before I was just buying for the sake please, of buying it. Uh, so I've got some ideas, so you'll see that when I get to the point of actually. Yeah, we don't yarn. tend to show off acquisitions, acquisitions and things. I don't know about you, but I actually feel a bit uncomfortable about showing things because I do appreciate that I'm quite privileged in being able to buy stuff. Mm. Um, I don't buy a lot of, I, t I tend to use a lot of commercial stuff but I, I feel a bit uncomfortable about sharing it all. Sharing yeah. It all. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why I, it's just personal preferences, isn't yeah. it? I quite like, like watching people, yeah. but I, pers 
personally. <laughs> I don't want to say what I, I feel about. uncomfortable, so that's why we yeah. will. That's why I don't. Yeah. So. But the thing is, I worked out as well, um, before Unravel, the last yarn show I went to was in 2018. Blimey, was that... As a customer, as a customer. Was that by Barist? Yeah. <laughs> it's insane, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and what else have I been at? Oh yeah, I've got a brand new studio in my garden. Eek. I love it. I'll send you a photo. Online. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say about it. I'm just really excited. It's amazing. It is beautiful. It is blue, obviously. It's like a shop. It is. Well, not at the moment. It's completely empty. I know. I just, I just had a look out there. I thought, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all packed. Like, you've got some of it behind us. The rest of it's in the car on the driveway. Um, Which you could probably see up there in the reflection. Yep. Um, <laughs> ready for East Anglia, which we're going to go and set up this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we don't do anything by half. That's gone round quick. Yes. Well, we were going to, there's been quite a bit of a delay during the, since the last one, and we yep. were going to record a couple of weeks ago, but you were deep, deep in <laughs> dying. and I had, my elbows were in dye, basically. Mm. I just literally. Yeah. <laughs> full of di- full of yarn, full of dye. There's just like literally everything. So it was yeah. a case of just, well, we'll wait until, and sometimes that will be the case because Shannon does have quite a lot of shows to prep for. Yeah. But it will be. Yeah, and obviously you're back at work. Yeah. So what have you been up to? <laughs> so, uh, I've had my hair cut again. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit more bearable, and hopefully I won't play with it as much this time. <laughs> I was really conscious. I've got to put that back. Back. I was really conscious that last time I was playing with my hair quite a lot. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. And I haven't had my pink put back in because, did I tell you I'm going to Australia? <laughs> and it's very, Not very hot nice. out there, and I didn't want it to fade. So I'm going to wait until I come back. Okay. Um, I've had a couple of uh, medical appointments. I've had a big injection in my shoulder. And I'm now back at work. So. How's that been? Well, I'll put a picture of me that I took. And I put it on Instagram. In your blues. In my blues. I was back in my blues. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'll put a picture of that up. And then you can compare how tired I look today. (laughs) I've just done two days straight and I'm exhausted. They are long days. They are long days, um, yeah. And when you've been off for six months after an injury and, you you know, it's quite exhausting when you go back to work anyway, but we do quite a lot of manual handling and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, but it was good to be back. Good to be back. It's like riding a bike. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was a bit worried when I first went in thinking, oh, am I going to remember how to do this? And... Um, I had to be revalidated, so there was a couple of people that were following me around, making sure that I could do anything. Ironically, one of them was the person that I trained. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like a bit weird. And they're like, I did, I did one, and they're like, yeah, tick, 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 you're done, <laughs> off you go. Okay. So that, yeah, so that's been it. Um, and the other thing that I've been doing was quite exciting is I've been working with a life. I suddenly had a panic then that we weren't filming. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I've been yeah. working with a life coach, which um, okay. I was getting a bit overwhelmed with sort of decisions and what am I going to do? And it was before I went to work and before I knew that I could go back to work. And it was all those kinds of things. Um, and I will put her link down in the description below because she helped me enormously. And it wasn't anything that um, she kind of said, oh, you should do this, you should do that. It was actually her getting me to recognise the things that I was already good at and just clearing my head a little bit and writing things down. And from that, I have something exciting. So Shannon's got her new shed. (laughs) I've got a new leaflet. Can you... um... So, I um, have been a, a test knitter for many years and I've been doing sample knits for quite a few years. But I actually thought I'm going to be doing it a bit more officially. So um, I've had some... We'll put the details on the card below. Yeah, I'll take a couple of pictures and pop them in as well if I I can. Um, And then, um, yeah, so I'm going to hand them out at East Anglia. Yeah, so 
That's quite exciting. It quite will exciting be. You've been doing it. a few, haven't you? I've been doing a few here and there, and obviously because things are sort of like, basically, if you know me, you know, but it, for those that don't, I've had two car accidents in two years. The first one was actually quite serious. Mm -hmm. I broke my neck. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm fine now. <laughs> and then um, in the second one, um, I had prom real problems with my shoulder and the rotator cuff and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. It's fine now. Um, and so I kind of like halted a couple of times. So I got sort of built up a little bit of a reputation and then kind of like it stopped for over a year and then I, I built it back up again and then it obviously stopped again. So yes, so you have to almost start again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But she's a speedy knitter. So if you do want anything, <laughs> She's my sample knitter as well, which means I'm going to have to now book in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's just, I just kind of think that, um, you know, having had a couple of accidents and sort of like, you kind of then start thinking, oh, what if I can't do this job for much longer? And yeah, yeah, you have to think towards your retirement and things. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> Still yeah. got a number of years left. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping that I can get to go to that lot. get to work and I work for the NHS, work in my job until I get to sixty. So a few me, a few years yet, mm -hmm. but not that many. <laughs> um, and yeah, see how we go. Yeah, but it might mean reducing days and things like that, and picking up a little bit of extra. So see how it goes. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> It's all go here at the moment, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, yes. what are you wearing? <laughs> so, everybody who watched the last podcast, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have done my heart. Yeah, you you're just quite made teary it. and you're about to do it again, I can see it. <laughs> just some of, the, some of the comments were absolutely wonderful. Um, as you can see... This is the Sailor Swift top by Veronica Lindberg, um, and I finished it. I was a bit unsure in the last one, but I finished it. Because I was unsure, and because I didn't trust the pattern, I actually made it with positive ease rather than negative ease, and it's actually too too big, too big yeah. to wear as a like a summer top. As which is, top, which is what I was going to wear it as. Mm. So um, it's got positive ease. And the reason I can't wear it as a summer top is, I don't know if you can see, the armhole is right down here. Yeah. A my, bra is up here. My, my, <laughs> so you got about that much of bra on showing. Yeah. If so it. if I was wearing it without the white shirt, there'd be about that much of bra on showing. Like Oops. Um, and I, I'm really not comfortable with that. So, and it is a little bit kind of, yeah, too, too big. big. So, um, I don't know whether I will be making it again in a hurry. Not because it isn't a good pattern. It's just, it's a lot of knitting. It was on size. Hold, please. I'm going to try and do this without... Oh, I'll get my assistant. <laughs> and I'll just do the hair flick. Hair, hair flick. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You don't come here for professionality, do you? Professionality? That's not even a word. <laughs> that that proved <laughs> prove that point. Right, so this was done on three millimetre needles. It was a lot of knitting. Yeah. And the eye cords, so pretty. The eye cords around the edges got were, an eye cord around here. was done on 2.5 millimetre needles. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of knitting. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be in a hurry to do it again quickly, but I will do it again. Mm -hmm. What changes would you make if you were to do it again? I would actually make it smaller. Mm -hmm. So to the pattern? or to the, to the pattern. Although what I might do is I might do a bit of a hybrid thing. So do the straps a bit wider, from, mm -hmm. like cast on the amount of stitches that you would for a bigger size, because I do quite like the, the wider shoulder. Yeah. Um, but not do so many in increases so it, it won't go down as far. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do it that way. Um, but yeah, make a smaller size generally. Yeah, it looks really nice with the shirt underneath. Yes. And I thought what I would do next time is make it in a nice limey green with white stripes. 
because apparently my colours are bright. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at pale colours because they wash me out even more. Yeah. So, yeah, so I would make it again, but obviously, and I would be more confident in making it again in the proper size and to wear it as intended. Yeah. No, it looks really good. So I used uh, Organic Trio, which is a yarn by Hyurtigarm, um, and the shade Denim and Cream. So for the Denim, I used 3.8 skeins. Um, they're 50 gram skeins, so it's 190 grams. Um, which is 875 metres and for the cream 875 metres that's not much no it? not really I used 53 grams I just had to break into that second one second yeah. one if I'd made it the size that I should have made it I wouldn't have had to um, um, 53 grams and that's 244 metres so, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. It feels really nice. Yeah, so you, you've blocked it, haven't you? I've blocked it. Did yeah. it grow a lot or not? It didn't grow too much. No. Um it kind of did a tiny bit and then it as it dried it kind of came back in again. Mm -hmm. Um and I think the Hyertigan is a blend of um wool, cotton and silk. Yeah, I can feel that it's got cotton in there. Yeah, so it's a wool, cotton, silk. I think I put the details on the screen last time and obviously we'll put it again in the, the show sure. notes. So that's my finished object. But thank you, thank you for all your love. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's lovely. I really like it. So that's that one. That's what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. And my first finished object. Cool. Right then. Um, so as usual, we are not going to do all FOs, all whips, all together. We kind of just go... Take it in turns. Take it in turns and... We tend yeah. to do our finished objects first and our whips second. But but we... One of us might have more whips and one of us might have more finished objects, usually. <laughs> it will change soon when I'm back, when I'm back at work. More, when you're back so. at work, yeah. But, but I do have a finished object. <laughs> so, we're going to have to lean right back, Mum. Um, this... Uh, I, no, I, you're too high. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Anyway, so this is the Slip Stravaganza by Stephen West. It is my second one that I've made, um, and I can say I completely made all of this um, because on the last one you helped with the triangles, which were these little bits just in here. Yeah. Um, because I'd only just sort of learnt knitting that year i yeah. learned in the april and then in the october i was doing a slip extravaganza which is totally crazy and keeping up with the mystery knit along uh, yes yeah, so, well until we got to the triangles <laughs> until you got to the triangles yeah <laughs> um but yeah so i was really really pleased with it the yarn that has been used is so you've got the black which is the main color is my after dark on my yak base which is merino yak and nylon um, and then the colour, you can see the blue that fades all the way into the slight pink and then purple. Um, that is a 13, 13, 20 gram mini skein fade from Beehive Yarns. And Beth did a, a Wednesday inspired set for Halloween last year. Yeah, so Wednesday, the Netflix TV series. Yeah. and. Oh my gosh, when I saw it, I was like, I have to have this fade. I love the colours. It was so very me. I just absolutely, in fact, if you can see it there, you can see all the oh, yeah. 13 colours. And I have used all 13, except on the last stripe, I could have gone another half stripe bigger, but I stopped. So it, I ended up with like, I think it was about 9, 10 grams left. But otherwise, I used every little bit mm. of the 13 skein. So I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, the fade is so lovely. And just the fact that I paired it with the black, I'm just, oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm just so pleased. And now that I've shown you guys, I can actually wear it. Yeah. And it, typically it's getting warmer. So I might not be able to wear <laughs> it for very long. <laughs> but yeah, very, very pleased with it. Mind you, um, it was cold. 
coming back from work on Wednesday night, there was like freezing yeah. fog. I didn't like it. No, <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> I wouldn't have liked that either. <laughs> but yeah, so um, very, very pleased. I don't know what else to say yeah. about it. To it's be gorgeous, honest. absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, it is huge. It We're going to try and put a picture in. I haven't even taken a photo of it yet. <laughs> I'll have to take a photo. She's going to have to take a photo now. Um, but yeah, very, very pleased with yeah. it. It's gorgeous. Um, it feels very, very soft. So the, the mini stain set that I got was the 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And then obviously I paired it with my Yak. So you can see that it works quite well together. <laughs> I don't. I was just sniffing it. I was just seeing what what wash you used. Oh, it's the unscented one, isn't it? No, it's German, but it's been sat on the chair. Oh right, yes. Last episode. Um, but yeah, you can see that they work quite well together. Um, oh, I don't know what else to say about it. It's beautiful. I just keep talking Petting about it. it. <laughs> so yes, very very pleased with that. If you haven't made the slip strap again, so I do recommend it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy I've, it. I made one, didn't I? But it it got eaten. Yeah, it got eaten by moss. Mm, yeah, but this bit, I love this little stitch. Oh, I just love it all, to be honest. Look, yeah, I love that bit at the bottom. The zigzag bit. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's so nice. <laughs> but yeah, I finished it finally. It's a lot of knitting. The cast off, so my original one took me five and a half hours to cast off. This one, even though I went, I did an extra stripe on the zigzags because you should have cast off there, but because I wanted to use all the yarn, I did an extra stripe. So I had about nearly 1100 stitches because it was just over a thousand normally. Mm. Um, nearly 1100 anyway. Did you put it in your book? I don't think I did, but it took me four and a half hours to cast off. Uh, oh, I had, I wrote more notes. This is my little diary and I've got my little knitting journal in here. So that was the Wednesday inspired image for the colours. Um, and on the back, she did actually name them, but I've stuck it in. So you can't well, I think we've got a photo of that somewhere. Because we put it in on the last one. Uh, so you've got allergic to colour, full of woe, the most interesting plants grow in the dark. Emotion equals weakness. Careful, that's my cold shoulder. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, kill or be killed, the raven. Ophelia, Ophelia College? Ophelia College? Ophelia College, yeah. Uh, not. <laughs> this isn't the next one's mine. Not hugging is kind of our thing. <laughs> What's that? Unitas est invicta. Snap twice, the nightshades, and my favourite unsolved murder. So it goes from the blue, which is the first one, um, all the way down to the purples. Um, so yeah, um, I had, so I used two 100 gram skeins of the After Dark and I had 19 grams left. And actually, from the last colour, I had... So I... So what did I do? So I actually had two small balls left from the last two colours to then make it worth it. And that added up to 14.45 grams, which wasn't enough to do another no. full stripe. Or full row. I could have done another full row. I could have done in here. I could have done those two. Oh, right. But then it would have cut that last line off. So it oh, made right. a really, really skinny stripe and I didn't want that. Okay. So I had 14.45 grams left over. Um, so it has six stripes at the bottom on the original pattern, but mine's got seven. Um, yeah, cast off took four hours and actually it's 958 stitches. So I've got speedier <laughs> with my knitting since October 2020, or I think it was January, February 2021 yeah. by the time I finished it. But yeah. Beautiful. I love it. I'm I'm happy with it, even if no one else is. I'm just going to have it on my lap as a bit of a blanket. And pet it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I have another finished object.
to check it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I did it so enough. professionally. No, I was looking where I sewed in the end. So basically, I used two fifty gram balls for this, <laughs> and I was just working out which way which way round. But I've done it so professionally, I can't work it out. I think that's the right side. <laughs> we don't get any better. So it's. So this is done in Lang 120, which is um, sold in 50 gram balls and it, I bought it from Venetia's yarn shop. <laughs> if you're playing a drinking game, Venetia, there's your first one. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, it's the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. I made it a little bit long because I literally went all the way and... Oh, I can see it there. Yeah, because you're going to hold it up. Yeah, is I... it... Is... There. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, you can't see it. I think it's literally just when you hold it up and we've got yeah. the light, haven't we? So um, I literally um, increased until I ran out of yarn and then decreased with the second ball. That's nice. Like as, we're being, as we're being honest. <laughs> so this is the one that I increased. Yeah, so and I start in which is a sorting thing, and at the other end, I ran out of yarn. <laughs> I wondered why that was so <laughs> random. <laughs> See, what did you do? So I decreased quicker over like two rows. <laughs> <laughs> decreased quicker, and then I had a little, <laughs> and I literally have no yarn. I literally had about that much to sew in the end. <laughs> Yeah. And no one would notice. Nobody was noticed unless no. we point it out because yeah. we are stupid enough we to do, do that. We do things like that, yeah. Yeah, so Sophie Scarf, um, the reason I bought I bought it, the reason I made it was because um, when I go on the plane, <laughs> I might get a cold neck. <laughs> if you want a drinking game, anything that goes towards Australia should be... Five days. You'll be drunk by the end of this episode, I'm yeah. sure. yeah. Long I used to play a drinking game every time you know when you did your podcast mm. and every time you said my lovely mum <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk with you <laughs> said that quite a lot didn't there I? was one episode where you didn't mention me once and I'm like what <laughs> what was that I don't know oh. <laughs> you're obviously annoyed with me that day yeah yeah so yeah and it's done in this beautiful bottle green what's the fibre it's just um, superwash merino. 100%. 100% superwash yeah. oh, merino. Nice. And it's Lang 120. Yeah. It costs something like six twenty five a ball. Mm. So £12.50 for a Sophie scarf. That's not bad. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. So like she folded it in half. <laughs> it's, it's a, a couple of inches short. Stubby bit on the end. <laughs> How have you had two 50 gram balls? <laughs> I think what happened was at the end of the first 50 gram balls, I increased again. And I think oh, I should have decreased because then I would have had enough to finish it. <laughs> anyway, it's making me laugh <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> before going back, saying that I'm going to become a sample knitter, I'm going to become a test knitter. I do do those things professionally <laughs> when it's for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, all of my samples are done properly. She'll even rip them all back if it's not yeah. quite right just to yeah. then do it again. Um, yeah. And if, if it's not, if I haven't got gauge. And, and I'm like, it's only for me. Don't worry about it. And she's like, no, but you can have it on your stand. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's on the stand. So, yeah. So, like, for example, I did your um, your cosy coastline shawl yep. with a cable. And I got to the very, very end and the last cable one of them i did it around the wrong way and i i finished it off so did all the ends and everything went to block it and i thought oh no <laughs> and then my mum said oh she won't notice <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I like, snap. <laughs> but i noticed and it's for her stand so i literally yeah, had to the... pick up all the stitches below and just rip it all back and oh i appreciate that there you I go probably wouldn't have noticed <laughs> <laughs> now she tells me next 
Uh, yeah, so I have got a... I have taught myself how to do colour work. Stranded colour work. Um, I don't know why I've put it off for as long as I have. It is a lot easier than I thought it would be. You were in your head too much, that's why. Yeah, I constantly kept thinking, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do sorry, it. Sorry, I keep looking at it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll show you in a sec. But yeah, I kept thinking, I can't do it, and it was fine. It wasn't a problem at all. Anyway, so... The only problem is, is I did not pick the best yarn for it. So there is nothing wrong with the pattern. The pattern is lovely. It is called the Winter's Peak Cow, Winter <laughs> Peaks Cow by Nicola Fury. Were you doing your hold music? I was doing my hold music. <laughs> when I phone her up, she's, she's sort of like, hang on a minute, I'll just check. She does this hold music. <laughs> I do this like little hum <laughs> to keep people entertained while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't even realise I was doing You're it. Doing then. <laughs> Hold music. Hold music. Um, so yeah, Winter Peaks Cow by Nicola Fury, who is also Tea Cake and Make on Instagram. She's lovely. She's a lovely lady. Uh, has got some fantastic patterns. When I originally said that I wanted to learn colour work, she got in touch because I think somebody recommended me to her or her to me. I can't remember which way around it went, but whatever way around it was but she got in touch and she very kindly gifted me this cowl pattern so I could practice because it was quite an easy one um and it was quite an easy pattern it's lovely but I picked the wrong yarn for it I picked two variegated yarns and even though I am a yarn dyer and even though I know that when you do colour work it's got to contrast so you can see it I just picked two skeins that I had at the time in my hand and didn't actually variegated yarns with low contrast yes so <laughs> you can't really see the pattern. It's a bit disappointing. You just, you it's just... my own fault. It is nothing wrong with the pattern at all. Um, in fact, I'll send you a photo and we can pop that in. Um, and yeah, even though you can't see it, I'm still going to use. I'm still going to wear the cowl. Your I do floats like. are lovely. My floats are amazing. I know you shouldn't really big yourself up that much, but honestly, look how neat they are. No, you should be really proud of them. I am so proud. If that doesn't show up very well, well I'll get Shannon to take a picture of it and I'll put a photo in. I have another colour work project, which I can show you. Go on then. Go it's, for it. It's a whip. Shall I do it now? Yes. Okay, so because I really enjoyed the colour work on this one, and thank you so much, Nicola, it is fantastic. I... I'm going to do another one of these so I can actually do it a little bit of justice. <laughs> um, I have got another colour work project and it's called the Why Are You Laughing? Because you picked low contrast again. You can still see it though. You can, you can see it better than you can on the other one. But yeah, it's still low contrast. <laughs> Apparently I'm not very good at colour work. Yarn choosing. So what is this one called? Poker Mania. So it's called Pokemania. Do you know who it's by? I wrote it down. Um, it was... Um, I can't remember who it's... Is it Knit Sonic? Felicity Ford. Felicity... Felicity I can't even speak. Felicity Ford. And it's called Pokemania. And it's designed for um, sort of an advent sort of yarn where you can she, swap, pattern, swap the yarns around. She originally did it for... John Arbor Knitwear, um, and you know they're knit by numbers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, yeah. Let's see if I can find a bigger photo. Yeah, she did it originally for um, John Arbor. Oh, that's really shiny. We'll put a photo in. Yeah, we'll pop a photo in. Um, but yeah, so I am using... Oh, I don't think they're too low contrast. So we've got a brand new colourway here. Well, in fact, they're both brand new colourways. So this one is called Morally Grey, and it is on my next base. And this one is called Enemies to Lovers, and this is again on my next base. Basically, I've got back into my reading and I'm really loving morally grey characters. 
They They're the see. most interesting. They are so much more interesting. It's like Spike in Buffy. Exactly! <laughs> oh my god. You yes, shouldn't please. love him, but you do. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So Morally Grey. If you've got any Morally Grey character book recommendations, let me know. Um, anyway, so yeah, I started this one a little while ago and here it is. So basically it's a circular It's cow. a circular circular cow um it's kind of like what do they call it it's the litmus cow yeah um and you just do the little spots in one color and the outside in another and then and you you, flip you can you can see where she's changed so here you've got uh purpley spots burgundy spots with the gray around the outside yeah and then here you've got it the other way around so got i think you can actually see the contrast more on that bit than you can on yeah that bit yeah um, but because we were talking about floats, oh, you can see they're better. Look how neat they are! In fact, you can even see the pattern a little bit, <laughs> a little bit better. But look how neat they are! I know it's amazing, huh? Amazing. So yeah, um, I am doing it as a bit of a show sample, but I also wanted a chance to show off some of the colour. Um, so the enemies to lovers. This is like burgundy, but you've got like dark burgundy so it's a very very subtle variegation um and then you've got the um enemies to lovers with morally no, gray morally gray which is this variegated gray so you've got light patches you've got dark patches you've got like warm grays cool grays it's literally a mix of everything is this going to be your stunt knitting on the, at the probably the show? yeah so basically shannon has a bit of stunt knitting so you can pick it up and have a have a knit and then i'll just tink back after the show and carry on um, in the pattern yeah um so, so yeah you can actually feel how nice it feels to, mm -hmm. to knit the yarn yeah but this is the next one because i haven't had yeah. a next sample yet and i keep saying i keep lot. i keep thinking that i want a spike i'm gonna sneeze sorry <coughs> oh, carry no, not. Carry on. <laughs> I keep thinking that I want a zweig in your neps because the zweig has got like little tiny crisscross stitches at the bottom mm. and I think if I use your neps I won't have to do them <laughs> okay <laughs> it's just it's for me it's not for a show or anything like that it's... No. do you know what colour yet though all of them <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a rainbow zweig that sounds quite nice actually yeah anyway right then so I lost my gloves. Gloves. My gloves. Shannon couldn't say gloves when she was little, so they're always known as gloves. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to make myself a new pair in bright green. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the Rodin mitts. I haven't even blocked them. Are we going to be able to do that? So this is this, like Michael Jackson. This is a pattern so, by Isolde. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We're gonna carry on. I'm not editing too much this time. You just get us warts and all. Warts and all. So these are the Rodin mitts by Isolde Teague. Very nice. I'm this is where you discover time. that I've got such a tiny hands compared to Shannon because this is my thumb broken <laughs> out. <laughs> so yeah, so what happens is you've got a left and a right. You've got your increases that come out of here, and it's a two by two rib. The one by one rib down at the bottom is done on quite um, small needles. It's DK weight yarn. I used Malabrigo Rios in oh. the lettuce colourway um, and with the rod admits you can actually make them this bit up to sort of here and then fold them back and as my lovely assistant is demonstrating see mine goes it's your thumb <laughs> she's got weird hands no I've got normal hands you've got diddy hands <laughs> So yes, yeah, so um, I didn't do it quite as as long as the pattern um, because I was a bit worried about running out of yarn. However, I'm I, sorry. What weight did you say this was? I wasn't listening. <laughs> I know you weren't listening. You were mucking about. Yeah. Uh, DK. It's Malabrigo Rios, which is like a worsted, like a okay. heav heavier DK. We might be rummaging in my Aaron box because I like some on my arse. 
what for the show? Yeah. What am I looking for? Projects. I should have had my book. Yeah, she didn't write any notes for this one, so she's on her phone. Foul. So, do you remember that TV programme? It was a TV programme. I know there was. Um, Malabri Go Rios, uh, in the colour Lettuce. And I was worried that I was going to run out of yarn, so I did them a little bit shorter on the main handy bit. And I used 0.65 skein, 65 grams. So I had plenty, but I was just, yeah. Which is 124 metres. Yeah, I might have to get you to make me some of these. Yeah. And I love them. They're really nice. They were going to go in. I even like the colour. Yeah. But they were going to go sure. into. Do you remember my really nice green cabled fingerless gloves? Gloves, that I meant. No. Yeah. I lost them anyway. Um, and But oh, these were going to go in the gift box. But I think they're, they're not might, anymore, are they? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to keep them. Look how tiny it looks when you take it off. Which is fantastic because the thing is, there's nothing, wor there's nothing worse than gloves that kind of are too loose. Yeah. Yeah. So I like the, the detail on the... These Do you know that's what I keep looking at? They These aren't blocked yet. So you can see how wiggly my stitches are. Yeah, so there. I love that design. And you've got all the... Th these still go up in a straight line, but that goes... What's it do? <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you just do it again anyway. I know. It's beautiful. Yeah, I think so I might they, have to um, they a are the Rodin mitts. Um, she's, Isolde has got such beautiful accessory patterns mm. but she's also just come out with a new jumper i think it's called the studio jumper i'm not sure if i'm wrong i'll pop it um it's beautiful yeah yeah are you gonna make that as well not yet at some point at some point i think i really because she's really thoughtful about what she does with her patterns they are true her garment patterns are truly size inclusive mm. and she gives lots of information how you can adjust it to fit you so I'm really into these designers that can um, that really work with knitters to make their own. Yeah, so people can make something that suits them yeah. and their body shape rather than having to do something that suits and because, only a few people. And because you've got that confidence that it's going to fit you properly, yeah, it just inspires you to make more and more confident. And yeah. But yeah, I would check out Isolde's patterns. I think this is one of her Knitworthy 7. She did a Knitworthy collection every year i think this was number seven oh, okay yeah but we'll yes. check that one out rodin mitts do you want to do another one because i feel like i took two swaps if not you can... well no <laughs> you can do them one at a time then well they kind of come from the same thing don't they well i'll do this one then <laughs> so i have finished my is that your stomach yes because uh, i eat before you come here i do because i've gone back to work we have our lunch at half 11. i know before we set up oh, and it's oh, 12 o'clock and it's like it's gone past my lunch um so this is the traveler shell by andrea maori i know that i have sewed in the ends but i haven't trimmed them right off yet because I haven't blocked it properly so hang on yeah. pull that up there we go yeah so it's gorgeous texture on it yeah and look at this so you might want to show them as well. I will do. So Andrew and Mary on her patterns, she does quite a lot of three needle bind offs, but the exposed three needle bind offs. So instead of doing it on the inside, you have the um, kind of like a chain of stitches on the outside. So this is the. But she makes it as a bit of a bit design of a feature. feature. So when I was picking up my stitches to do the ribbon, I can't see where the, the thing is now. There. There's the three needle bind off and there's my rib stitches and it goes, I've managed to get it straight. 
Yeah, all the way down here. It looks good. I'm pleased with that. Anyway, so the reason it isn't... Um, it's a nearly finished object. It's a nearly finished object is because... So, in the original pattern pictures... I'll put one in here. Andrew's got lovely... Stop doing that. Lovely big pockets on her traveller shell. Yeah. This one um, hasn't got any yet. And this one hasn't got any. I have my pockets, or one of my pockets here. So, this should actually fit on the front, here. I'm not showing this very well. Anyway, you'll have seen from the picture that she's got beautiful big pockets. This is the pocket that I've done. I've done two. Based on the pattern. Based on the pattern. And if you're going to make this pattern, what I would suggest is do your pockets first because they're your swatch. That's a good idea. However, the pocket, the pattern is truly size inclusive as well. Mm -hmm. Really good. But the pockets are the same size, whatever size you do. So you cast on the same amount of stitches and you do the same amount of rows and short rows. So if you've got a tiny cardigan, so you've got a massive pocket. So like Andrea's... Like you've got bigger cardigan, yes. cardigan, you've got a smaller pocket. So yes, so basically, if you look at Andrea in hers, hers lovely big pockets, that's the reason why I wanted to do it. Um, Diddy pockets on mine. And I'm I'm doing the, si the sixth size, and I think there's 10 or 11 sizes. Mm -hmm. So if you've, you're doing one of the bigger sizes, you've got weeny, weeny pockets. So I sent an email to um, the DRK Pattern Help um, and said, have you thought about... <laughs> <laughs> but basically saying that I was a bit disappointed with the, the size of the pockets compared to the, the top because um, on her one it showed lovely big pockets. pockets and you expect to be able to have the same sort of features whatever size you make mm -hmm. um, and so I was disappointed that the pockets were all the same size no matter what size and had she thought about grading them to be proportionate um and so i'm gonna see if i can hold it up so they go on there okay we'll do it upside down if you hold it upside down you can see there you go so andrew's still got like half of so andrew's pockets come right yeah. over here and then right down to here on hers because she's done a smaller size and i want those big pockets yeah so um, I sent the email off. Um, one of Andrea, what they said. one of Andrea's assistants has got back to me and said she's um, spoken to Andrea and that she's going to look <coughs> into regrading the pockets. So hopefully it will come as an update at some point in the future. So that's why mine hasn't got pockets on at the moment, but they will have one day. One day, but more <laughs> for now, it's a wearable thing. You can yeah, wear you it. Still wear it. Um, can you? I haven't blocked it. I just literally hung it up and the things have fallen out a little bit that because it's out, like yeah. um garter stitch more or less or stockinette and reverse stockinette um so it's dropped a little bit um but once i've got the pockets properly i'm gonna do a proper wash and block yeah in the meantime i'll probably just steam it before i wear it yeah it's still nice. It's still uh, yeah, it's still colour. nice, and I, 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 yeah. So it's done in um, drops, baby merino in the colour petrol, petrol, because we had a petrol episode last time. Yes, um, everything with, was in petrol. with my um, toaster tea in petrol, <laughs> and this one's got kind of like a denim in blue. We kind of like had a blue theme. Mm -hmm. I've got a green theme going on today. Blue and green. Yes, blue and green. Yeah, <laughs> nice to diversify. <laughs> but yeah, so I am actually really pleased with it. But I, yeah, but I just want the I want big pockets. You want big pockets. I want big pockets. It's the general thing. Yeah, I could probably have been more concise about that. Yeah, but there you go. Could have been. Never mind. Um, so I'm not going to go through too much detail in this one. But you've seen this book before. I've showed it off twice now. Once. Once, thing. Once now. So this will be twice. Because we've got Trevor. So 
This is Trevor. Uh, Tom named him. I don't know why. It's Trevor. It is Trevor. He quite often, like he's laying there right now, he looks like he's having an existential crisis. Yes. So, yeah. Trevor is Trevor. Um, I definitely recommend this book. I love it. Uh, and Didn't you get two copies of it? I did. One of my girls from my knit group actually bought the other one. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. So she came and bought that one off me. So, yeah, I've only got one copy now. But I love this book. It is fantastic. Very well written i literally want to make one of every single creature that's in here not all of them are on the front there you've got a couple more on the back um yeah love it but we've made we've made i've made two more so do you want to show one and i have one so we've got kaiju and leshy <laughs> so this is leshy I love Leshy. I love Leshy. So he's one of my favourites. So his Leshy, I just think he's so cute. And he's got like little felt stuck on for like little leaves and his eyes and his nose. Um, so you've got Leshy just here. This is Lester the Leshy. I think it should be Lenny. It's Lester, Tom named him. And then we've got Jeff the Kaiju. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I think they're really cute. I love them. I love them. We're going to end up with hundreds of them around the whole house, I'm sure. But yeah, it was so <laughs> much fun. The tail is so good. And these like <laughs> haunches. <laughs> yeah. He's very, very cute. Um, it's so clever. Yeah. It's the way she writes the pattern is just so good. Um, my sewing them together isn't as neat as what hers are. I don't know why, like this one, his arm sticks out this side, but doesn't stick out as much that side. Don't know why. I don't know. It is what it is. Perhaps that's um, his most dominant hand, and he's like got more muscles up here. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yes, yeah, so we've got Leshy and Kaiju, and then it's... Trevor. Trevor's a sci-fi robot. So yes, I just want to say like the I've used the same cotton here that I used for the robot before which is um it's just this knit craft yeah it's that way around knit craft um which comes from tiny friends it's called tiny friends tiny friends that's what it says yeah these are tiny friends tiny friends um and it's by hobby craft it is a 25 gram ball what does it say it's 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, and you've got... Oh, there's no meter itch, does it? I thought it did. Oh, yeah. 72 and a half meters per 25 grams. So that's what this guy's made out of. And then um, Jeff the Kaiju is made out of... And it was scraps that I had just lying around. Um, it's called a Lion Brand Kobo. I haven't got the yarn band, um, but it was 51% uh, cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. So it's a lot softer. I love the feel of that one, mm. but I wouldn't use it again because it was very, very splitty. Yeah. Um, I've, I think I've made like face cloths out of it before. Again, it's lovely to use, but it's just very, very splitty and I just wouldn't recommend He's got a wonky bit. <laughs> I know, his, his spikes are a little bit wonky. They're a bit fiddly to put on. But well, I've got two more little creatures. I love them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And this one was done like literally three days after the last podcast. So he's just been sat up here for ages on my shelf. With his wonky horn. Antler. Same diff. Um, but yeah, we've got three of them. But anyway, <laughs> I really like them. <laughs> Perfect. You'll go. Right then. So, in the same vein as Shannon showing two at a time, I'm going to show two at a time. Okay. So, this is one for the present box. You have to kind of... And it's not blocked. I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all and block them all on mass. It's the hipster hat. You're going to come over to mine and unblock unblock them. 
<laughs> you're going to comment no, for I can do, I can do the little ones. I can't do the big things. Oh, okay. So it's the Hipster Hat by Petite Knit. It's done in West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece DK. It's the... You can... <laughs> You can wear it with its little pointy bit up the top, or you can pull it on. You can actually do the the brim triple. God, very. It's really warm, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I used seventy two oh, grams that. or one hundred and sixty meters of it's basically the fleece blue face Leicester DK by West Yorkshire Spinners. It's in the color brook, which is a kind of bluey green. Um. Get ready. Bought from Venetia's yarn shop. Um, Poor Venetia. And I used a 3.5 millimeter needle. I did the adult medium size. I like that. Yes. Guess what I'm getting for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I've put on here impulse cast on. All my current widths are either too complicated or too big to be portable, so I need something easier to be out and about knit. My out and about knit. Huh? <laughs> my notes on Ravelry, <laughs> they make me laugh. I bought the yarn to be a cow, but I didn't like it, so I finished it, so I frogged it. <laughs> and then made a hat. <laughs> I mean, why not? I cast on 112 stitches and will work until I run out of yarn. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Just word vomit, isn't it? It is. Notes? I kind of do... <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, the hipster hat. <laughs> you got to show no. that. I'm gonna show it. Oh, it's uh... shiny. <laughs> they tell me wear it. Yeah, yes. now you're wearing it. <laughs> but I do. I re I really like the pattern. Um, I like the decreases, and you can't see them properly because I've blocked it. So I'm not really pro very professional. But yeah. So that's that one. So that is going in the gift box. Mm -hmm. And this one is a work in progress. And this is my second tips to hat. And this is, I'm going to Australia. <laughs> and I'm going to go and stay with my friend Darren. And so um, he wanted a spurs coloured, i.e. navy. It looks like nothing on earth. It doesn't. It looks like it's never going to fit anybody, but it actually stretches out really, really big. Mm -hmm. It's because it's ribbing, isn't it? Yeah. Ribbing always pulls it in, and then. So I've done uh, ten and a bit inches of two by two rib on a three point five millimeter needle, and I'm using these um, Cubics needles by Knit Pro, and I don't know if you can. Mm. They're square, and actually, they are really nice to use. Are they? Yeah. Don't know if you can see that. But yeah, they're really nice to use. Um, you can have a go. <laughs> no, I'm just feeling them. Yeah, it feels weird. Um, so you know when you've got the sixteen-inch circulars, you tend to have shorter needle tips, um, and yeah, legs all. <laughs> so I find, I, I do, I can do it, but I just find after a little while, my hands are like, oh, I've got to, you know, yeah, do, with the, short do the thing like tips, you do. I can't. Yeah. Um, but these, they just feel really nice. Anyway, I bought them from Venetia's Yarn Shop. It is my local yarn shop. And because it's going to somebody who will stick it in the washing machine, and yes, it does get cold enough to wear hats in Australia. In the evenings and, and winter. And especially when you have no hair. He doesn't watch this. He'll have no interest in watching no. this. So he won't know that I've told him. I told, told everybody that he's bored. So I'm using the Stylecraft Life DK. Do you know where I got that from? Venetia's Yarn Shop. Poor Venetia. <laughs> <laughs> so drunk if she is drinking. <laughs> it's seventy five percent premium acrylic and twenty five percent wool. You get two hundred ninety eight meters per hundred grams, and it is the shade navy. 
2313. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is um, once I've finished this um, and sewn, sewn up the end, um, I'm going to give the rest to my mum um, because she does charity hats. She does, um, she makes about 20 adult hats and 10 children's hats yeah. every year and they go in like shoe boxes um, with other goodies um, for an organisation that my sister-in-law knows of, works with. So that will be the full 100 grams out of my stash. Nice. I have been keeping a track of how much has been going in and out. Mm -hmm. do, you want to, do you want to know? Why not? So, in my notes. So what I wanted to do was, I, I've got so much yarn, but I have got no energy or enthusiasm to catalogue it all. So what I thought I would do is I would just literally write down how much yarn I have in every month and how much yarn I use. And hopefully at the end of the year, I'll have used more yarn than, you've got coming than I've bought. So hopefully it will be, I'm still Australia, a deficit. So, because you've already planned some yarn shops that you're going to, haven't you? Oh God, yes. Obviously. Ops. I'm doing that on my own, apparently. He doesn't want to come with me. No. No. Do you care? No. <laughs> I'm going to spend the day in Adelaide and I'm going to go to all the yarn shops and all the stationery shops. Mm, anyway, I want to go. in January, I had 350 grams in and I used 1,192 grams. So 842 grams of yarn disappeared from my stash. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. It's in January. What about February? February, I had 500 grams of yarn come in, and that's because I had yarn gifted to me for a test knit, and you'll see that in a minute. Um, that one, um, I had the Lang 120 Merino, which was 100 grams come in, and I made the um, Sophie sure. scarf. scarf. So that's gone straight out again. And then I have 100 grams Blue Fern Yarns shawl. Dessert set. Dessert. Dessert shawl set. Yes. Didn't you do the so shawl slash through? I'm calling them socks and shawls now because I keep messing up. It was slash. shawl slash sock, but now it's shawls or socks. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so I have 500 grams come in and I used a total of 868 grams in February. Um... 368 grams out. So 368 grams out. And so far in March, considering we're only on... I don't even know what the day eighth? we're on. Yeah, we're on the 8th. Oh, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, I've had 100 grams in, which is Shannon's um, March dessert set. Um, and I used 375 grams in my Traveller shell. And I'm counting that as a finished object, even though the fin pockets aren't finished, because it is a wearable item. Yeah. Um, and then when I do the pockets, all I'll do is I'll count the pockets. Uh, yeah. So I've had 375 out and 100 grams in so far. It's not bad. It's my intention not to buy anything at East Anglia this weekend. Intention. Um, no yarn. I, I mean, I'm looking for the yarn cosies. Yeah, there should be quite a few there this, yeah. this time. Um, and but I'm not going to um, because I'm probably going to buy a lot of yarn in Australia. Well, yeah, I've already given you some money for me. <laughs> yeah, and for my birthday and Christmas present last year, um, you gave me quite a bit of money, didn't you? For, yeah. For whatever I wanted, yeah. it was yarn. Or it was yarn, or it was for you to go and do something nice yeah. for the day, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I am on to my last whip mm -hmm. um i am making so because i was quite disheartened that somebody had started and finished her shawl i have finished it i'm not showing it today because it's not blocked um i haven't sewn the ends in and it's not blocked and it will need a good block so i'll show it next time i have started i have not finished and i've messed up in a few places but we'll ignore that 
Design features. Yeah. Um, we'll go with that. I have started the Brioche Delicious shawl. So I have actually started on to the second colour. You can actually see hers better than mine because mine's a bit, a bit dark and stormy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, mine's got very high contrast in mm. colours, isn't it? So um, apparently I can do it for Brioche, but I can't do it for colour work. Anyway, uh, we'll get there. But yeah, so this is my Brioche Delicious shawl by Andrea Maori. I Every time I say that, I mess it up. Every time. Um, it's usually Brioche What's It. <laughs> pretty much. I think she re should rename it. I think Brioche What's It. Bri yeah, see? Whatever. Um, but yeah, so... Will you stop that? <laughs> She's tickling my foot. She's got her foot right next to it. She keeps anyway. digging it in my leg. And then no, I don't. I did it once. Get on Barney on YouTube. Our first, our first Barney. <laughs> um, so yeah, here you can see that I did do a bit of a mess up. There is a quite a large hole in there that should not be there, and somehow I messed up. There. I didn't notice that until I was halfway down, and then thought, I'm not going to tink back. I'm not going to rip it out and do it again. I'm just going to keep going because the rest of it worked out quite nicely. And there is also I don't know how that one happened, but there is a green stripe going across my white stripe. Again. <laughs> oh no. You said white stripes. I've got Seven Nation Army going through my oh, head now. <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, so that's the front. And then that's the back. Um, yeah, I'm quite proud of myself. So I've taught that myself two things this year. Yeah. We're only in March. Yes. <gasps> I was going to suggest having a face your fears cow. But obviously you're you're away. It's still terrifying. I try still try and something new. I just think because maybe I should have done that. Yeah, maybe we we could do something. Yeah. Face your fears. Face your fears, Cal, or something along those lines. You know, should we have a chat about that. And yeah, we'll open. Like, we'll we'll talk about it, and we'll maybe do it next time. Um, because I mean, I've still got plenty to do on this one, yeah. and I've still got more colour work. So, what yarn are you using? Um, so I am using, uh, so this is my shimmer base, but it's undyed. So it's 50% superwash merino, 25, 50%, 50% silk. So 50, 50 merino silk. I don't know if you can see the shimmer on there. I think Some, you can. sometimes we can't see whether you can see it or not until I'm, I've come to editing it, editing it. This is really messy. Bear with me. You need one of them. What's they called? Yarn, yarn cozies. <laughs> yes. Okay. So they're not very neat. The yarn, the colour yarn that I'm using is from Yarn Unique, and it is called. It's a Lux Yak for Lux Yak Four Ply, two hundred meters per fifty grams. It's fifty percent yak and fifty percent silk. Um, and Yarn Unique. That's their label hopefully it's not too shiny um this is, this is what she does but anyway um and i bought them from and i bought three skeins because i just saw them i loved them i think you, oh, you can see some of the shimmer on that as well can't you mm. got some fluff on my nose um yeah so these are the three colors that i bought um i did write them down so the purple is called Distant Bliss, the blue is called Elegance, and the green is called Introductions. So you don't actually use very much at all in the first stripe, do you? No, I mean, what, that was 50 grams originally? Hold it, please. <laughs> Seriously. We're idiots. Um... So I have got, oh, 41.58 grams. Yeah. And it was a 50 gram ball. You don't, you use hardly anything for the first, so, yeah. first stripe. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Because that's why I, because obviously um, Shannon's having three colours. In the original shawl it was three colours. But I actually used two colours because my first stripe, my last stripe were in my, in one in one colour, yeah. And I still only... I, oh, so I could probably get away with my third stripe being in that, but yeah. I want to use all three in the same project. Yeah. Um, and the reason I picked that one um, is because it would just give it that 
real contrast in mm. colour. And I went through, I spent ages going through all the projects um, that were on Ravelry and on Instagram when I searched for the shawl. And the ones I really liked, I liked them when they had the sort of neutral background with the colours yeah. in the stripes. Um, so yeah, well, I... Yeah, and I think as well, so when you're learning, it's quite wise to have a real high contrast. Oh god, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a row that you do that's got no contrast on it, and I could keep getting lost when I was doing that, when I was finishing off the first mm -hmm. section. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I... It's a lot easier than you think it is, the yeah. brioche. Uh, you do have to concentrate, because I've had a few people message me saying, oh my god, how hard the, is it? The video will be coming. It it will be coming. Yeah. Uh, it's just, everything got away from us, really. Yeah. Um, but so many people have said that they want it. And, and it's not a tutorial. There are plenty of tutorials out there. It was just literally my light bulb moment. That made it click. That for made you. it click for me, and if it made it click for me, then hopefully it, it might work. For it you, might yeah. work for somebody else. I mean, I use the Stephen West yeah how to because he's got one that's split in two. So you've got one side where he does it continental, and then it goes further along in the video, and he does like the English growing style, yeah. which is closer to what I do. Um, Mina Phillips has got a really good brioche tutorial as well. Yeah. Um, so there are plenty of tutorials from people who are far more professional than me. Um, but it's just literally, it's, oh, it's gorgeous. It's how um, I kind of like light bulb yeah. moment. Um, oh yeah, and I bought the yarn from the Sheffield, the Wool Monty. Not last year because it wasn't on, but the year before when I was vending and I saw the colours and I was just like, I'm going to have to have them. And I even picked that pattern back then, that that's what I was going to use it for. Um, what? what? I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought we were going to do it together, but apparently I'm not. Sorry. So I'm just doing it on my own. She's disappointed in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> right then I'm on my last whip and I'm going to put a little thing there say add gifted because this is a test knit that I'm doing for Amy Sher Designs um, I've done I think this is my fifth one um, who is uh, an American Taiwanese knitting designer who is truly a gem she is amazing um she um came up with the weekday jumper and the weekday dress which is already live um and it's got sort of like a mock cable we're gonna pop i'm gonna pop a picture in there <laughs> i'm thinking what's she doing <laughs> ah. so i'll pop a picture in and now she's got the t version which is uh fingering weight um and so it's very very small and i'm using a 50 percent merino and 50 percent cotton that amy sent me <laughs> i don't think you can see that that's why i didn't do that <laughs> i had to great be careful this yes yeah, so it's in the grown colorway which is green. Green, yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is the yarn that Amy is starting to stock and she sent it to me um, to use. Um, and it's it's beautiful. It's so light. So there's... <clears throat> What's that? It's 50% extra fine merino yarn. Mm -hmm and 50% cotton Is that from Andalusia. Ah, oh, I can speak Spanish. Um, and it's 220 metres per, per 50 cool. grams. So it's yeah, quite good metre. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it just feels so light. Anyway, um, so what happened was I cast it on and what I wanted to do was when I go on the plane, Australia, <laughs> Please don't. Be drink sensibly. 
I'm not encouraging you to do it at all. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get to the point where I um, did all the increases and joined um, under the arms. And so it would just be literally <coughs> plain stockinette. So I would do the neck band and the sleeves before I go. So I merrily knitted away. It's um, a compound raglan. So basically what will happen is the increases happen at different rates, whether it's a sleeve increase or um, a body increase. Um, and sometimes, and there's also neck increases as well, and they happen at different rates. But she's got a um, tutorial. No, what's that thing that you like where you do all your calculations on spreadsheet? That's it. <laughs> um, she's got one of them that she sends out, so you can work out at the end of each row how many stitches you should have in each particular part. Um, and then you literally knit flat backwards and forwards until you get to a certain point, and you join it in the round. And then you keep going um, until you s separate for the sleeves. Now, the gauge for this <laughs> um, is 24 stitches and 30 rows for 10, cent 10 centimetres. Mm -hmm. My gauge working in the flat is 24 stitches, so bang on gauge for stitch gauge, but I was 28 rows instead of 30 rows, so it meant that basically my my things was going to be a little bit longer um so maybe about a centimeter longer under the arms shorter no oh no is that right is, yeah okay, is, i'm gonna sharp it's longer all right i'm gonna shush. so i maybe knitted away joined in the round got to the sleeve separation and i measured And Ray, I just want to show the detail. Think you've got yeah, so it deep. looks like cable. Mm. Let go of it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you'll have seen it in the in the in the jumper pattern, the dress pattern. It looks like cable, but it's actually lace. Yeah. Um, and when when I went to separate, I measured it. I thought this looks really short. Um, and it was six and a quarter inches, and for my size, it needed to be eight point seven five. From sort of from, the shoulder from the neck down, down to, to separating. So I read the pattern and I thought, well, have I done it wrong? So I asked Amy, I said, have I done this wrong? I, this is what I, what I thought you meant at this point. Is that right? And she said, yeah, that's right. And I said, well, I'm just about to separate the sleeves. And my thing is only six and a half inches. And I know it should be 8.75. And she said, have you checked your gauge? This was very, very late, and it was just the day before I was due back at work, so I was probably a bit stressed. My gauge, when working in the round, went from 24 stitches to 28 stitches, and from 28 rows to 36 rows. So I wish I'd taken a picture to show you the difference. And when you look at it afterwards, it's like it's so obvious that my I tightened up in the in working in the round um one thing is i don't know whether because i didn't change needles when i had more stitches so i don't know whether i was just using the tips of the needle so therefore my gauge went smaller or whether it's just like i i you just stressed and you're knitting tightly tighten, or yeah. whether i just tighten up when i work in the round i don't mm. know never noticed it before never had a problem before so what i've done was I've just, I've you just ripped it out. started again. I thought I could go back to where it was joined in, in the round and use a bigger needle. But actually I thought, do you know what? I'm just going to start again. Um, so I'm using 3.25 millimetre needles, which is the, the suggested needle size for the pattern. Um, but when I come to join in the round, I'm going to go up to 3.5 millimetre needles, do a few rounds, um, make sure it's a longer cable just in case. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll measure again. Yeah. So I've got to frantically. Yeah, it feels lovely. Yeah, I've got to frantically knit. It's it's only because that's probably what an inch and a half, mm. a couple of inches. So I've only got sort of like about another six inches to do before 
Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm working all day Monday. I'm working for you tomorrow and Sunday. Um, what have you got tonight? I've got tonight and then... Um, tomorrow night we're going out for dinner. Yes. Which One of our fun. friends had come, is coming down from up north. For East Anglia Yarn Festival. For East Anglia. So we're going to go out for, for a meal on Saturday um, with mum. Oh, by the way. Yeah, so I've got, and I've got all day Tuesday. I've got Tuesday morning to go and get me my, my pampering, get me nails redone and everything like that. Yeah. Um, so I've got Tuesday afternoon. Um, and my flight isn't until nine o'clock on Wednesday night, so. You've got plenty of time then. I should get to the point where I can, I just want to get to the, where it's working round and round and I can do it on the plane then. Yeah. Because the first plane is 14 hours. And I'm, I've got to stay awake for that one. And then, so because I'm leaving quite late at night, I need to stay awake from the first one. And then the second one from Kuala Lumpur to Adelaide, I can sleep through because I arrive at Adelaide at something like seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, and then I've got to stay awake as long as I can on the Friday. Yeah. And hopefully <laughs> I'll be all right. The joys of traveling. You've got to plan when you sleep. <laughs> but yes. It'll so, be worth it though. Yes. So I might. Last time I flew to New Zealand. I don't know whether I should say this or not. Um, You're going to. You know when they come round with your meals and everything like that. Um, they said, oh, would you like to, like a drink? And I flew Qantas to New Zealand. And um, I, I sat next to these two ladies who were in their 70s who decided to have an escape from their husbands mm -hmm. uh, um, and have a um, it was in February so they wanted to go somewhere warm <laughs> so I said I'll, I'll have water and she went it's not Ryanair you know <laughs> it's not Ryanair you don't have to pay for your drinks <laughs> she'll have some wine <laughs> so they come in the tiny tiny bottles mm -hmm. and I'm a bit of a lightweight anyway so I had two of these little, a little bit of a lightweight mini bottles of wine during an 11 hour flight it wasn't yeah mm. <laughs> and then got on the second flight slept got got off the plane in melbourne thinking oh and then realized i had to get on another plane to fly to christchurch that was exhausting so at least this time i've only got two mm. so but yeah should be good so hopefully i'll have plenty of time to get to the body part of that and it'll yeah i think you will yeah um just don't do the knitting while you're drinking your wine. No. But it should be just literally plain stocking it and so hopefully. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. So that's all my bits. Yeah, so I've, that's all of what I've got at the moment. Blimey. Hour and a half. You said you didn't want this one to be that long. Yeah, I'm sorry that the last one's two and a half hours. Yeah. And we've done it in a one-take wonder, haven't we? We have for this one, we which is insane. We haven't messed up quite as so much as we normally do. Not today, you've got to edit it yet. I know you'll find that. I probably done. won't edit it too much. <laughs> you, if, we, if we are who we are, um, yeah. yeah, that's it. This is what we're like in real life, so. Pretty much. Well, we're going to have to wrap up because we've got to go and set up for yeah. East Anglian Yarn Festival soon. Yes, are you going to feed me before we go? Mm, I don't think I've got anything gluten-free. And my car is full, so we can't even go to Morrison's. We could go to Morrison's and yours, and I'll buy you something. No, it's okay. We're going to get a McFlurry. If you want a McFlurry, you can there get a There are other ice creams available. No. Not when it comes to <laughs> McFlurry. <laughs> well, I have to say that. I'm because of YouTube. Oh. But there are McFlurries. Smart is McFlurries. Why are we whispering? I don't Smarties know. McFlurries <laughs> are the best ones. Yes, I enjoy them. And what else was I going to say? I don't know. People were asking me something. Oh, yes. I'm going to put a picture in of my mum. <laughs> oh, for the shawl? For the flowery shawl. I did put it on Instagram. And we do talk about her quite a lot. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm going to put a picture in. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. That'd be nice. I'll watch and, that later. And if you, you if you it. are coming to East Anglia, you mm -hmm. might see her on Sunday. She's coming on Sunday. Yep. 
Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, can I say hello to Shannon's men? Yeah. And don't forget to come and say hello to us. Yes. <laughs> because we're there too. <laughs> and tell us who you are. Yes, please. <laughs> no, it should be a good weekend. It should yeah. be a really good weekend. Yeah. I do like this one. Tom doesn't do this one. I don't know why Tom... Because you said that you wanted to do the first one at the Holiday Inn. Because that was your first yarn show as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. As a vendor. Yeah. yeah. And then you just... I suppose you did last he, year and then you're doing this year. I suppose he um, he only has limited time off that he can take because he works in hospitality. Yeah. So, but... And he usually takes his birthday weekend off, which he did. So yeah. then it'll be two weekends yeah. in a row, which is not ideal. So for the third Mother's Day in a row, I'm working for this one. Last year, I took you and Nan out for a Mother's Day meal, didn't I? A random Sunday. Yeah, I think it was July. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say it was immediately afterwards. <laughs> It was oh, very it was nice. nice day, that one. Yeah, because we had, we we you, you both got a pub. We got a fantastic pub in our village that does. Um, I think I said this last time, didn't I? Um, the whole menu is basically more or less the whole menu is in, is gluten free. Yeah, and this is where we're going tomorrow, tomorrow night when our friends are down because we were trying to think of places, and um, we we was they were saying, "Oh, is is, is Pat coming?" That's my mum, and I said, "Oh," and she said, "Are we going to the railway?" And it's it's, it's so that's where we're going. It's so easy because I'm awkward, um, and awkward. I and You've I know got it's a dietary issue. and it, I know it's safe. So yeah, and it's good food. It is good, proper proper food, and it's literally five minute walk from my front door. Yeah, so I go and park it in the front of yours. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, yeah, it should be good. It should be a good night. And mum can walk along with a walker to her yeah. to it. So. And you can have your drink. Yes. Not too much though, because I'm working on Saturday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. <laughs> you are working Saturday morning, but... So, Saturday is a school night for me then? Yeah. <laughs> of course it is. You said you were helping? Yes. We've got to go and pack up the last few bits in the car. Yes, so I'm going to pack up the sale bins, which I can see there. Got some lovely stuff in there. Yeah, I've got two sale bins this time. Yeah, so if you're coming for a bargain, look for the sale bins. Mm -hmm. um, I might force a leaflet on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I might go and investigate Stitches Tees, who are, um, it's Charlie and um, Vicky. Yeah, um, Holt based, aren't they? They're Holt based. Um, lovely, lovely pair. They, they ran a, you know these cafes? We're going on again. You, you are, should yeah. stop me. They do these like cafes where you paint your ceramics and things. Oh, right. That they ran the Sticky Earth Cafe in Cromer. Oh, did they? Yeah. Uh, well, her mum did, and yeah. Charlie and her mum. I was going to say I didn't think it was them. Yeah, but... it was Charlie and her mum. But you know, um, Simon from the audio mm -hmm. donkeys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's a drummer, <laughs> and, oh, yeah, <laughs> and he's also a potter. So they took it over. Oh, okay. We need oh. to do that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So if you're in Cromer, go and see the. I don't know whether they still called it the Sticky Earth Cafe. Whatever they've called it, I'll link it below. Um, and if you ever come to Norfolk and you want some good places to visit, get in touch. Norfolkgirlsknitting at gmail.com. Definitely manta at gmail.com. Hello at bluefernyarns.co.uk. Yeah. All right. So we will see you, see some of you, tomorrow. And the rest of you on Sunday. On the weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Yes. It should be good. So, but yeah, we've been a bit c quicker. We're never going to be succinct or concise. No. no it's of... still owned up an hour and a half. Just. Bonus. Just. Right then, we're going to say goodbye <laughs> and we'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.